The legal Amazon in Brazil is both the Amazon of the tropical rainforest and the Amazon of the tropical savanna, which has now become our most productive agricultural region and one of the agricultural dynamos of the whole world. And that is actually 61% of our national territory. So at one point, the government put me in charge of the development policies for the legal Amazon. That would be like in the 19th century telling an American, well, you take care of the United States west of the Mississippi, because it was the majority of our national territory. But it was a vast world. And when I assumed this responsibility, I, had, I, I didn't know the Amazon. I had only begun to travel in the Amazon. And then I, I discovered this, this extraordinary, unthinkable world that, that, that existed there. And I began to work with the nine governors and governments of the Amazonian states, uh, with the social organizations, with the academic institutions, uh, in, in developing a project for the Amazon. Now, the view from afar, from, from, from abroad, is the Amazon is a forest. But the Amazon isn't just a forest. The Amazon is both forest and savanna, and something close to 25 million Brazilians live and work there. And if these people lack economic alternatives, that are compatible with the preservation of the rainforest, they will be inexorably driven to activities that result in devastation. So we needed to form a policy that was not just environmentally sustainable, but that was also socially inclusive. It could be inclusive only if it was sustainable and sustainable only if it was inclusive. And there's no precedent for that in the world. There is no successful project of sustainable and inclusive development of a large forested region in the tropics, anywhere on the planet. So we couldn't copy. And the whole tenor of this project had to be entirely different from the kind of environmentalism that on the whole prevails in the rich countries. Environmental politics in the rich countries has been chiefly a kind of post-ideological, post-structural quality of life politics. Its fundamental premise is history has disappointed us. So let us seek refuge in the great garden of nature. Uh, that's not the conception that we want to have in Brazil. We want to think of this problem as, above all, an opportunity, and to define the Amazon as a potential front line, as a vanguard, in the creation of a new model of national development. And so I began. I began with a series of proposals and initiatives, and I discovered, to my astonishment, that the, that the initial problem was land tenure. Because of the way in which the Amazon was settled and the laws that were subsequently devised, no one in the Amazon knows who has what. Less than 4% of the land in private hands until recently has clear legal title, with the result that pillage is more attractive than both preservation and production. So I began with all of these partners to form two parallel projects. One for the Amazon of the forest and the other for the Amazon of the savanna. For the Amazon of the forest, it wasn't enough to pursue 
a sentimental extractivism, for example. There are rubber tappers in the Amazon. So the idea might be you just give them more money so that they take care of the forest and then they live in bigger cottages and they have better meals. It's ridiculous. It's like saying uh, that of the cotton weavers that Karl Marx describes in the early chapters of Das Kapital, we should pay them better. Uh, you either have a revolution or you don't have a revolution. And what was necessary is to lay the foundations for a way of transforming the wood and non-wood products of that vast forested region that is compatible with its, with its preservation. And that required and requires a world of initiatives, a new form of technology appropriate to the heterogeneous tropical rainforest, a way of providing advanced environmental services over this huge land area, a series of economic linkages between the urban industrial complex and the forest complex, and a combination of legal regimes that would create an alternative to the only legal regime for the use of the forest that has existed up to now, which is the concession of large areas to big companies. We have to have regimes that permit the collective or community management of these forests.